Alrighty folks, today is carburetor day. Working on the 65, we decided we are doing a camper conversion. It's going to be a micro camper, a micro van conversion. Um, we rebuilt the other carburetor. It's leaking everywhere. The top is very warped. It does run better than before we rebuilt it. But so yes, if you guessed it right, next. Alright, so if you guessed it right, I'm in my kitchen. Why? I have no idea. Like, uh, what do you do when you put it together, realize everything's warped, and then it spits fuel everywhere? Well, and we are going to install it and see what we got from there. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome from my kitchen. In this case, we went to a manufactured carburetor. We are going to change the carburetors out and see if we can improve performance. There's a fly flying around in here, getting my attention. Let's see if we can shoot that one more time. Howdy, and being that my camera's battery is low, I'm gonna have to recharge it. I'm gonna do a quick intro. Hello and welcome to Carburetor Days. We pulled the carburetor off of the 65. We rebuilt it, put it back together, and the results were really good. When we put the carburetor on, it was still spitting and leaking fuel, and because the top was so warped, uh, that would create vacuum uh, issues and all that stuff. I ended up ordering a remanufactured carburetor. Today, we are going to change over the carburetor, put it on, and see what kind of results we have. Stay tuned. <laughs> like in those hot rod shows. Here we go. Carburetor was easy. We put it on, and we're ready to go. Let's fire up. No, that's actually the old carburetor. I um, just want to show you where we're at at the moment. Um, the only thing I did right here is remove the linkage from the carburetor. And you can't see because that hose is in the way. Oh, there it is. It's just laying down there. It just snaps right off. It's got a little clip that holds onto a little ball, which of course you can't see, but it's on there. You just have to take my word for it. The other thing I did, um, I've got my choke cable, which I just lubed. Um, you can't see that at all. It's down there somewhere. You're going to have to take my word for it. Uh, it was kind of seized. I just threw some um, silicone graphite kind of lube in there, worked it all up, and it works free. I'm going to need that because the linkage, the choke linkage, is actually integral to how you, how all the linkage works. Even though this isn't a specific how-to, these carburetors are really easy to change. you got a 7 sixteenths on this side and the other side. That's your vacuum line. you got a fuel line right there you've got your linkage you'll end up doing don't worry about the coolant hoses those are below um, and then of course the choke which is already off you undo all those pop off the gold carb put the new carburetor on and away you go if there's anything I need to show you I will show you in between other than that we'll be back when the new carburetor is on alright so I guess apparently I'm gonna film doing this hope you can hear me take the vacuum line off this one right here this guy's chewed up and he just kept stripping and rounding. Got a special pliers. This guy right here is a pair of jaw. They're really good for removing um, stripped and rounded bolts and nuts and stuff like that. Ultimately, I would say replace the line. I'm not going to at the moment because I don't know where I'm going with the project. For right now, I'm going to use this. It's not the right tool. It's just because the nut is stripped. I'm going to pull the carburetor off. I already pre loosened this. I'm just going to take this vacuum line off. This fitting will transfer the new carburetor. This is the fuel line. That fitting will transfer the new carburetor. A couple of nuts and bolts, and this will be off. They call this the left handed van. Everything's almost in your way. The vacuum line's in the way on the other side, so it's kind of going over the top. I'm going to take them off now. Lines pops right off. He's just a vent tube. The choke's already been off. It's just a screw here and a screw there. I have to loosen this one up. I'll use a backup wrench. Wrench to hold this, wrench to hold that. Otherwise, you just create fights that you don't need to. And that lovely sound in the back. My neighbors. My gardener. 
It's almost as sort of the nature of it. Loosening it so I can hide it. Taking off the mounting nuts, there's a nut and a washer. Sometimes the washers come right off, so you can use a magnet. Be careful, you can pull the carb off with it, but don't drop anything in the intake manifold. Magnets are great. Well, welcome back to the noise. Here's the carburetor. A couple things I had to transfer over. This clip right here, which is supposed to come with it, is disappeared. Parts guys were no help. One day I'll do a video on what I think about parts guys, being that I used to be one. This brass fitting was transferred over, as well as this brass fitting right here. Preliminary adjustments. The uh, spec on this one goes for about one and a half to two turns out. Each vehicle is different. Find out what your spec is. That's where this is adjusted out. This is your idle speed, and it's actually related completely to your choke speed. You get your choke full on. This cam opens up the throttle valves a little bit. Let me show you the movement. Choke off, choke on. This screw right here is your idle speed adjustment. I've got the choke off right now. I'm going to put it on, and we're going to do. Uh, we're going to end up adjusting this for your idle speed. And we're going to end up adjusting this, fine adjusting it for um, your idle mixture. The other thing I do have to transfer is there's a vent tube that goes up here. I'll worry about that in a bit. I might replant that. Put a different line on there to do something a little bit different from what I haven't decided yet. Tighten out the uh, hold down for the carburetor. You have to go tight enough where they seal, but not go too tight because you'll end up causing warpage on the carburetor. Long term, you can get drivability problems. It can actually twist the insides of the carburetor, which is not going to run right, and you'll run into all sorts of problems. So, 
to check with your manufacturer specifications. Or if you're doing something different, you a performance thing, your speed shop. Let's see what they recommend. I'll usually shake the pot a little bit, take it to the kind of clearance. Now that it's flush, it's not tight, but it's flush. Adjust it evenly, a couple turns on one side, a couple turns on the other side. Of course, sometimes it's nice to have a shorter wrench in hand. Tight, the gasket will compress and seal up around it. Nut. Make sure it's not otherwise you know bypass your choke all together. Tough make sure it doesn't work. Choke lever. Actually, straight. Right, to get comfortable in these things is not that easy. Pop on a choke and get more access to it, and if you can see it, it's got a little bend. Squeeze it with the pliers. That'll pretty much straighten it out. Or to walk on you. Sometimes, not so many 
couple times. Drag that shield all the way down. I'm going to all the way up. Put some right in there. Careful not to drop parts, it's way too easy to do. Got the jam screw. smooth operation. The thing I wanted to do is double check these because the blade was a little bit loose. Smaller screwdriver. The found me. My cousins are getting cold. Go on the other side, but you can see how loose that one was. I noticed that the choke blade was dancing around. Get those good and snug because you do not want these getting loose in there. Sweated. I'm shaking it, it kind of stops. Start over. Be very careful on these. Be careful on the brass because they will strip very easy. Then it goes really easy with the wrench. It should feel just a slight drag and nothing else. This one's going in nice and smooth, so I know I've got it. Too many times people grab their impact or electric. Without even starting the bolts, they'll run threads in. And that results in cross setting everything. Sometimes an easy fix, sometimes a bigger fix, but it results in a waste of time. who would follow me on the conversion side of things simultaneously. My next job after I check out the carburetor, we're going to go take care of the floor inside the bed of the van. Going out shopping. Got a bunch of stuff for the interior. So we're going to move some rust. I'm going to see what I have to fix. Maybe do some body work inside the van. That's going on at almost the same time as just me, so when I end up with this, I'm going to the floors inside. My goal, my solar is coming in later on today. I'm going to do something a little bit different. I had a problem with the brake line. That may feel like it right now. But these nuts, they'll sometimes get some rust in there and they won't want to spin right. Then you're trying to figure out if you're going in right, if it's tightening, if it's crossfaded, you can't tell. I've got a little propane torch I'm going to take out, I'm going to hit real quick. 
don't do it with fuel, you will burn yourself down. It's not going to be pretty. And if you want to see if that looks like good, any burn more, bring some cash for donations because dude, it's going to break your heart. Let me go grab my torch real quick. Let me heat it up. Let it cool, put it together. recommend doing that inside a vehicle. Work it free with a wrench. It's too hot to touch, but this is actually freed up quite a bit. I might hit it one more time. But it's going really easy. One more time. That moves with a lot more ease. I'm going to let it cool down before I attach it. That's how you can loosen up a bunch of stuff. It helps on these old vans. It helps out tremendously. I've got everything else really attached except for the linkage. if I can do it from up here. Sometimes it's really easy, sometimes it's a pain in the butt. And that's on. If you're wondering about this heater hose, I just bypassed the heater core because it's leaking. I'll do a project for later on. I may change it on the heater core, put it somewhere else, like in the cab or the uh, van, the back, cargo area. Put a little extra heat out there for those cold times. I recommend doing this by hand because it's a little bit warm. I'm going to walk it really slowly with a wrench. And I'm making sure it goes in, doesn't wobble, goes in nice and straight. I'm not putting any force in it, letting the wrench do the work. You can tell one of the ways that it's cross-threaded. It starts off easy and then it binds. Anytime you feel that it might bind, stop, pull it apart, take a look. I think I've got a video out there where I've got a thread chase kit. I was working on one of the dirt bikes. How to clean up some threads with the kit. But yeah, I just went in really, really easy. No pressure, no bonding. This one doesn't need much pressure to tighten up. But I'm going to have to again. One of the ways I can tell also is if you can move this at all in there, it means the fitting's not tight enough. It's quick of a way to tell. Alright, there we go. Just gotta put 
battery in. Pour some fuel down there. Let's see what we got. Double check my work, make sure everything is good. I'm gonna check the adjustment before I even start it. Really my adjustment. You really can check. My adjustment you can really check. Using that in right there. Right there. And this isn't even a good angle. I want to make sure it's just touching. I'm going to adjust it in or out depending on how much I need to adjust the idle. But, try to work around the camera here. It's touching right now. I'll probably adjust that in a bit. We'll see how it's running. Best thing on these old carbureted cars, the factory manual says warm it up for 30 minutes. I'm hoping it'll go quicker than that, but just a fun fact to know. All right, hang tight. I'm gonna go grab something to eat. Come back and we'll fire her up. All right, gonna put the battery in and start it. Since there's no fuel in there, I've got a little bit of fuel. I'm gonna pour down the carb. Just a little bit. Gonna hook up the battery and we will go from there.